Okay, this is the 23rd lecture and this is our problem session 6. I hope the number is correct. On frequency response of small signal amplifiers, we will work out one problem and then we shall work out a couple of problems on differential amplifiers. <coughs> the first problem that I consider is question number 3 in tutorial sheet 6 and the problem is this. We have a VS ten K is the source resistance, ten microfarad is the coupling capacitor, then the base is biased in a peculiar manner. There is a resistance of hundred K another resistance of 100 K and the midi point is connected to ground through a capacitor whose value is 10 microfarad. <coughs> the collector is connected to this point and this point is connected to plus 10 volt and the resistance of 3.3 K. The emitter is grounded. <coughs> As you see, this is the DC feedback biasing. That is, the current, the current that flows through 3.3 K is IC plus IB. And that IB, IC flows here, IC flows here and IB flows here. <coughs> cannot flow this path therefore it comes to the base. We have done this kind of biasing. The only thing that is that was not done was this capacitor which is for obvious reasons to prevent AC feedback. That is input signal cannot go to the collector directly because of this capacitor. <coughs> Output signal cannot go to the base because of this capacitor. Okay? This capacitor is a bypass. And then the output is taken from the collector through a capacitor, again 10 microfarad, all three capacitors are 10 microfarad and then a 4.7 K, this is the actual load and this voltage is V0. The transistor parameters are <coughs> beta equal to 100, I do not want that marble from there beta equals to 100, VA equals 150 volt, C mu is 2 puffs, C pi is 5 puffs, C0 is 0, no stray and Rx equal to 100 ohms. Even though Rx is given in most of the problems, we uh, conveniently ignore it because it increases our problem of analysis. Okay, the first thing we have to do is to find <coughs> the, <coughs> the problem is to find out A V S J omega. That means we have to find out all the frequencies, all the critical frequencies. Uh, we shall have three critical frequencies corresponding to the three capacitors here. Okay, this capacitor is plays the role of CE bypass. You see the usual biasing is if the resistance comes here, then we require a bypass at CE. CE bypass was avoided but one capacitor had to be introduced here. So the low frequency response shall be affected by this capacitor, this capacitor and this capacitor. Therefore, I expect that there shall be three critical frequencies omega L1, omega L2 and omega L3. Let us call these capacitors as C1, C2, C3. We therefore have three low frequency critical frequencies omega L1, omega L2, omega L3 corresponding to the three capacitances and there shall be two high frequency <coughs> critical points corresponding to C pi plus C m the Miller capacitance C pi plus C m, we will combine them. We do not want to analyze a three node circuit 
and the other critical frequency at high frequency shall be due to C mu plus C naught at the output. C naught is fortunately 0, therefore you expect that omega H2 corresponding to C mu plus C0 shall be much larger than omega H1 due to C pi plus Cm. These are the qualitative observations from the circuit. Therefore, what we expect is <coughs> because the capacitance is 2 puffs, it is a much smaller capacitance as compared to C pi plus Cm. As you will see, Cm would be very large would be about 200, I am sorry, about 50 times C pi, okay. We will see this, but in general qualitative observation of the circuit reveals that AVS J omega would be of the form AVS O divided by 1 minus J omega L1 by omega, 1 minus J omega L2 by omega. <coughs> this subscript corresponding to the corresponding <coughs> subscripted capacitors 1 minus j omega L3 by omega multiplied by 1 plus j you must distinguish between the low frequency and high frequency it would be omega divided by omega H1 and 1 plus j omega divided by omega H2. Is it clear? Any more explanation needed? You must be <coughs> able to write this expression just by looking at the circuit, just by looking at the circuit. How are you sure that there are no poles, no zeros in this? How are you sure that there are no zeros? Yes, uh, <coughs> we are not sure unless we draw the equivalent circuit. But we have experience with the equivalent circuits of this kind. We have experience already. If C mu was not absorbed in Cm, the Miller capacitance and the output capacitance that is C mu was not absorbed in C0 at the output, then we know there is a 0 at minus Gm divided by C mu plus Gm divided by C mu. We have already done that, but since right from the beginning we look at the complication of the circuit and we say sorry we uh, have to use Miller, we cannot use a 3 node circuit and therefore that 0 shall be avoided in the analysis. Anyway, this is much further from any omega h that you can imagine and therefore uh, this 0 will not count. The first thing that one should do is to find the parameters and therefore <coughs> we require a DC analysis. Let us look at the DC analysis. <coughs> this is 10 volt and this current is I sub C plus I sub B. <coughs> Therefore, I can write 10 volt as equal to this drop, drop across 3.3 plus the drop across 200 K. These two can be combined as far as DC is concerned plus 0.7 and that shall give me I sub B. Agreed? So, my equation <coughs> becomes 10 equals to beta is given as 100 and therefore IC plus IB would be 101 times I sub B. This has to be multiplied by 3.3K. This gives the drop in 3.3K. <coughs> then the drop in 200K is due to I sub B and then we have VBE which is 0.7. This gives me I sub B as equal to 17.4 micro amperes. That means I sub C which is 100 times this would be 1.74 therefore I sub B, I sub C is 1.74 milliampere. You must now check because of many uh, <coughs> hurdles that we have passed, we have seen circuits which behave very peculiarly. We go ahead blindly calculating, but ultimately we find that one is cut off and one is saturated as in question number 2 of minor 1. Okay. Therefore, VCE we must check this, although it is not required in any of the parameter calculations, you must check this routinely and you must see that this is not neither negative nor comparable to 0.2. Okay. <coughs> VCE is 10 minus 
the drop in 3.3 k which is 3.3 k multiplied by 1.74 milliampere. Actually we should have made 1.754 okay, because it is IC plus IB but well I did not do it you can you can do it. I found this as 4.25 volt this is not critical to include 1.754 that is IB also because the voltage is much above the saturation voltage. Okay. Once we have found this once we have found I sub C we can find GM as I sub C by VT you take VT as 26 millivolt then it becomes 0 0.067 mo. Okay. Then you can calculate R pi as beta divided by GM beta is given as 100 and the result is 1.494 K and R0 can be calculated as VA divided by I sub C 150 divided by 1.74 milliampere and this comes out as 86 K. The three parameters of importance have been obtained. These all these three depend on I sub C therefore we had to calculate the DC conditions. Okay. Now let us look at the mid band equivalent circuit <coughs> to find out AVS0. Okay. The mid band equivalent circuit would be like this VS then at 10 K what would be this resistance it is not the parallel combination now at mid band 100 K goes to ground is that clear because of that capacitor C3 it is 100 K <coughs> not 100 K parallel 100 K okay all right this point must be must be recognized then we have R pi which we had found as 1.494 K and the voltage across this is V pi with this polarity. We have the output current generator GM V pi GM is already found out 0 0.067 0 0.067 mo. Then we have well we will combine everything into one resistance RL prime is RC which is 3.3 K parallel 100 K shall come in parallel from the collector to ground through via C3 then we can also include R0 which is 86 K this is 3.3 K R sub C and this calculates out to 1.86 K. Oh, we must take that into account. Yes, parallel 4.7 k. That's how I get 1.86 k. Okay. Therefore, the uh, <coughs> I hope I did calculate. Yes. Now, therefore, AVS zero. AVS zero would be minus GM RL prime okay, minus GM RL prime multiplied by V pi divided by Vs agreed. So, this is this is calculated by inspection by observation no <coughs> equations are needed. Let me write this minus GM RL prime I am writing this separately because of I am not writing numerical values right away and I am not calculating because of a specific reason. What is the reason? I need this value for why capacitor. for calculating the Miller capacitance. So, I keep it separately these are tricks of the trade otherwise you will have to go back and calculate again. So, I, I do it in one step <laughs> then my <coughs> V pi over V s is 100 k parallel 1.494 k divided by R s which is 10 k plus this resistance 100 k parallel 1.494 k and this comes out as this is minus 125 multiplied by this value and I calculated this to be equal to minus 16. Okay. I do require this value 125 
because I have to calculate C T. Let's calculate in one step. C T, the total input capacitance is C pi plus C mu 1 plus G M R L prime. I know everything C pi, I know C mu, I know G M R L prime. This becomes 257 puff. This is the equivalent capacitor. And therefore, the omega H1 due to the input capacitance would be given by omega H1 would be given by 1 over CT 257 puff multiplied by the Thevenin equivalent resistance across it which is 10K parallel 100K parallel 1.494K and my calculation gives this value as approximately 3 times 10 to the 6 radians per second. The other high frequency critical point due to RL prime and C0 plus C mu which is at the output is equal to is this clear or I have to show the circuit again? It is clear. So, this would be C mu which is 2 puff multiplied by I had calculated the equivalent resistance as 1.86 K and this is greater than as you can see very easily 250 multiplied by 10 to the 6 RPS. So, omega H2 can be ignored if you so desire and omega H the high frequency 3 dB point would be approximately 3 times 10 to the 6 radians per second. But since the question asked is to find a V s j omega, you must include this, okay. You must include a factor 1 plus j omega divided by 250 <coughs> multiplied by 10 to the 6. Is the question clear? The question I did not ask fi find the high frequency 3 dB point, no. I asked find an expression for A, B, S, G omega and therefore this must be included. If the question was to find the high frequency 3 dB point, this is perfectly all right, okay. Now let us go to the low frequency. Sir, the this analysis you are applying both the method of time constants and the approximation on the same time? No, yes. no. The time constants method, okay, that is a good question. Let me answer this question. You see the only way that this equivalent circuit differs from the high frequency, if I want to convert it to high frequency, I apply this approximation of C T and this is C 0 plus C mu. Now it is no longer the method of time constants and the analysis are exactly the same, are exactly the same. If you write V pi over V s, this critical frequency will come. If you write G minus G n times this, this the other critical frequency omega H 2 will come. So, it is not after the approximation the method of time constants and the method of analysis are the same. As I said the method of time constants has to be used when there are many capacitors. This is as good as analysis, it gives the same results as method of time constants and this is what was used to validate or give confidence regarding the method of time constant that in simple cases the results are identical <coughs> in complicated cases no sorry they are not identical they differ <coughs> okay now the low frequency equivalent circuit as i said in low frequency equivalent circuit there are three capacitors now and they are coupled to each other and therefore there is no other way but to consider the effect of each at a time. Fortunately here you can consider the effect of C1 and C2 in one go, fortunately. So first you assume that C3 is short circuit. Let us see what the equivalent circuit is. The equivalent circuit as long as C1 and C2 are decoupled from each other, well, the method of time constants and method of analysis are the same and fortunately we can do that here. You draw the equivalent circuit Vs. It is always good to draw the equivalent circuit. 
10k, then you cannot miss anything. 10k, 10 microfarad, this is C1. Then we have the parallel combination of 100k and 1.494k and this voltage is V pi. Then we have the GM V pi. We do not require the exact values of this because GM does not determine the time constant. Then we have now we cannot combine 4.7 k here because we are considering the effect of C2. So, 10 microfarad this is equal to C2 and we have a 4.7 k. So, this resistance is the parallel combination of R0 which is 86 k parallel RC which is 3.3 k parallel 100 k. Anything else? No. That is it and this calculates out to 3.08 k. Now, here is a, uh, a point to note. We had to calculate this separately. Why did whereas we also calculated the parallel combination of this and 4.7 k. We could have done it in one step anticipating that this resistance will be needed. We first calculate this then we calculate 3.08 parallel 4.7 rather than putting 3 uh, resistors in parallel and 4 resistors in parallel, we could have done that. Just like we calculated AVS0, all right. These are tricks of the trade with experience. You will know that I should not calculate the 4 together. I calculate 3 of them because I require these values separately and then the fourth one, all right. Now, you see that C1 and C2 are decoupled and therefore, the critical frequencies due to C1 and C2 can be calculated from this circuit. All right, <coughs> omega C1, omega L1, for example, due to C1 would be 1 over the capacitor is 10 microfarad and the Thevenin resistance, not the method of time constants or <coughs> otherwise, it is the same. Thevenin resistance would be 10k plus 100k parallel 1.494k and this calculates out to 8.7 radians per second. Omega L2, the second due to the second capacitor comes out as 10 microfarad once again multiplied by 4.7 k plus 3.08 k. Okay, the current source is open and this calculates out to 12.85 radians per second, all right. These two are comparable, is not it right? They are comparable. Even omega L1 squared and omega L2 squared, one cannot ignore one with respect to other because the ratio is simply 1.4, okay. However, these two are not the only only culprits, there is a third culprit C3 which creates a complication in the calculation of <coughs> omega L3 and we have to draw that circuit separately and it is instructed to consider how this circuit is drawn. You see, as far as C3 is concerned, if C1 and C2 are shorted, then by equivalent circuit, draw this carefully. We have this 100 k's like a dumbbell 200 k's on two sides <coughs> and this is my C3. This is the position occupied by C3. Okay, let us draw C3, C3 which is 10 microfarad. Then on the left, on the left comes R pi which is 1.494 k. This is R pi, I am sorry, this is V pi and comes at 10 k in series with V s, the unjoined <coughs> equivalent circuit. Considering C 1 and C 2 is short and C 3, effect of C 3. And on this side, on the other side, we have the G m V pi, <coughs> G m V pi, then in parallel with 
Find me. How much is this? This now will co contain 4.7 kilos. So 1 point. What was the value? 1.86. 1.86 kilos. So whether it won't contain 100 kilos? It will not contain. Ah, yes. Wonderful. It cannot contain 100 k now. Very good. So we have to calculate the value. This gives us another lesson <laughs> that we should not have calculated the, those four resistances at one time. We require these three values separately. Okay? Who is this boy who pointed out this? Name. Atul Sarup. Atul Sarup. Okay. That's very good. I appreciate it. So we would have made a, made a great blunder if we had inclu included 100k. Why? Why great blunder? Because R0 is comparable to 100k. Isn't that right? That 86k. Suppose R0 was not there. If it was simply RC parallel RL, then the error would not have been much by ignoring that. Okay. So, we have to calculate this. And now, the problem is that looking from here, looking from C3, what is the resistance that it sees? And therefore, what we have to do is, to find out the equivalent thevenin, we have to short this, and then we have to replace this by means of a voltage generator V, and calculate the current I. Then V by I <coughs> shall be the equivalent resistance. It cannot be obtained by inspection, unfortunately. So let's draw a clean circuit on a clean slate and then proceed. <coughs> we have a V and this current is I. On the two sides there are 200 Ks. 200 Ks. Then we have a GM V pi. We cannot open it because this is a control source. V pi is not zero. Okay. What is V pi? V pi is the potential division between 100 k and the parallel combination of 1.494 k which is R pi and Rs which is 10 k. So this is V pi. This is V pi and V pi is not zero therefore we cannot make this open and in addition we have the parallel combination of R zero parallel RC parallel RN. What we have to do now is to write, okay, I can write V pi in terms of V by inspection, correct? This would be 10 K parallel 1.494 K divided by 10 K parallel 1.494 K plus 100 K multiplied by V. So V pi I know in terms of V then <coughs> I have to write a node equation here. Okay? I have to write I as equal to <coughs> what is this current? This current is V pi divided by <coughs> this parallel resistance. So V pi divided by 1.494 k parallel 10 k. It is this current. Okay? Then this current is, if I call this voltage as V1, is V minus V1 divided by 100K. I now want to know what is V1. Okay. We also see that this current is equal to GMV pi plus the current through R0 parallel RC parallel RL. So my third equation would be V minus V1 divided by 100K equals to GMV pi plus V1 divided by R0 parallel RC parallel RL. There are three equations now and the way to proceed and the systematic way to proceed is to replace V pi, you see I have one equation, two second equation and this is the third equation. From one I replace V pi. Wherever V pi occurs, I replace V pi. All right, and then from the third, from the third, I get V one in terms of 
V, V1 in terms of V and then I substitute in this equation. I divide both sides by V that is the input conductance the reciprocal of which is the input resistance. It sounds complicated but it is not complicated because you will work in terms of numbers. I have not simplified this but I have I must assure you I have calculated and my calculation after some <coughs> calculator approximations and sleepiness approximation my calculation gives omega L3 as approximately equal to 2, 2 RP. So 2, 8, what was the, what were the other two? 12.85. So who controls? No. <laughs> this is the answer I was expecting and I wanted to correct it. No, it is the highest. But even that does not control 12.85 because there is a frequency close to it. So this is a fit case. This two radians per second can perhaps be ignored compared to the other two, 8 and 12, because one is 4 times, one is 6 times. So is it, is this two calculated uh, with the eliminating 100k from that factor of four instances? Well, we have calculated R0 plus Rc parallel RL. Yes, 100k comes here. 100k comes here. This you have to calculate independently. This is what I said that you learn two lessons that you should not go ahead calculating the equivalent of four resistances because equivalent of three resistances are also required. So you have to do it in two steps. Okay. So who controls who controls the low frequency response? Omega L is controlled by omega L1 and omega L2 because omega L1 by omega L3 is approximately 4 and the square is 16 and omega L2 divided by omega L3 is approximately 6, the square is 36, okay. But the total AVS J omega now has to be written in terms of what we found out for AVS 0, then 1 minus J 2 divided by omega, that is omega L3, 1 minus J, yes, 8 point, 7 divided by omega 1 minus j 12.85 divided by omega multiplied by 1 plus j omega divided by what was omega h1 <coughs> 3 into 10 to the 6 and 1 plus j omega divided by 200 I didn't calculate that I showed it as greater so you, you put that value, whatever value is. This is the complete answer. Yes. That's right. So what do I do? What do you do? You ignore. <coughs> okay. Good question. How do you calculate omega L? What you do is you ignore this. You ignore this and you ignore this. These are the high frequency. Then you have two frequencies, two cut of frequencies. And therefore, you have to write the equation a v uh, square of this, square of magnitude of this is equal to 2 and solve for omega L. Okay? That is it. Exactly like the uh, <coughs> question number 3 in uh, the minor. Now, in the rest of the time, we work out a couple of problems on differential amplifiers because I. <coughs> I find that you will come to the tutorial on differential amplifiers only in the next week. So let us let us do some differential amplifiers <coughs> and you will see that this is a different brand of calculation. Even the DC calculations are uh, somewhat different from what you have done so far. The first question uh, draw the circuit with me a simple problem R sub C R sub C, this is 10 volt <coughs> and R sub C is given as 100 K, not the large value of R sub C. This is a micro circuit, it is an integrated circuit 
this S of C is not a lumped resistance. It's a what is it? It's another transistor. It is a current source whose output input is 100 K. But that we will see later. Suppose it is discrete. Even in discrete differential amplifiers, what you are interested in is voltage gain, not power gain, not voltage level or current level. And therefore, your signals can be microvolt order and your I sub C1, I sub C2 can also be in the range of microamperes, all right, because it is voltage which is of importance, okay. So, I sub C is large, you have two uh, transistors, it is a discrete circuit let us say, okay. We will calculate this as a discrete circuit. There is an R sub E E and the current through this is 100 microamperes. This is equal to I sub E E and this is taken to minus 15 volt which is minus V E E. This is plus V C C. And of course, because it is an op, because it is a differential amplifier, the two inputs B1 and B2, they are left as terminals to be connected to sources. The differential voltage is to be connected between these two. As far as DC is concerned, unless the source resistance is specified, this would be considered as grounded, okay. So, that forms the heart of DC calculation. Now, the question is, capital T is given as 25 degrees C, that is the normal room temperature which means that you can use Vt equal to 26 millivolts. Va is given as 100 volt which means you know what is R0, R0 can, has to be combined with R sub C and they are now comparable, okay. So, uh, Va can no longer be ignored. <coughs> beta as I said you must require very high betas for these transistors, beta is 200 and the question <coughs> is to calculate Q points of each transistor. Naturally, the Q point of any one transistor would suffice because the two are identically biased. Q points of each transistor, you require the value of REE to be able to support the 100 microampere current, what value of REE is needed with these two uh, supplies, 10 volt and minus 15 volt. Note that they are not identical. In ICs, usually they are identical, but to bring variety into experience, uh, we assume them to be non-identical and we also want the value of RID, the differential input resistance, differential input resistance. We require the value of a sub d, the differential mode voltage gain and fifth we require the value of the common mode voltage gain A sub C, okay. This will completely analyze the amplifier. So the first thing that we should do is to check the Q points that is find out I sub C and V C E. Now to find I sub C our procedure would be slightly different from what we have been using earlier. You see what we do is we write first we write 10 volt equal to do you know this? This current how much? As is given as is 100 k. This must be half of this 50 microampere because beta is large okay. So, I know RC, I know 50, I know the current and therefore I know the drop here. <coughs> then what I want to find out is this VCE, okay. So, 10 volt is equal to the drop in RC plus VCE, then we could have gone through this but we do not, we go via this because I know as far as DC is concerned this point is grounded. So, this voltage is 0.7 with minus and plus, agree? That makes a shortcut, I do not have to go through this. So, my DC equation becomes 10 equals to 100 K <coughs> multiplied by 50 microampere 
plus VCE then minus, minus 0.7 because I go from the emitter to the base which gives me VCE as equal to 5.7 volt. Wonderful. So 5.7 volt and 50 microampere is the key point of either transistor. Now to find out REE, yes, it's not clear. Okay, 10 volt. How is this connected? Plus 10 and negative ground. So 10 volt is equal to the drop in RC plus VCE. We have come here. When I go to ground back via the base of transistor 1, that's why minus 0.7. This voltage is 0.7 volt. Okay? And I found out VCE. So how do we get 50 microamperes? How do I get 50 microamperes? This current 100 microampere is approximately twice I sub C. I sub C1, actually it is IE1 plus IE2, but since beta is large, this is approximately IC1 plus IC2 are identical and therefore it is half. Any other question? Now, to calculate REE, to calculate REE, what we do is we come from here and go to the negative supply. We write a KVL. So, what should I write? 0.7 plus REE multiplied by 100 microampere, then I have to go to ground via this supply, minus 15, plus, minus, plus, minus, then minus, plus, therefore minus 15, which gives me REE as equal to 143K. Is this point clear? Okay. I come from the base of transistor 1 from ground 0.7 plus the drop in REE plus whatever potential this point is at. This is, this is a minus 50. So that's what I write. You have to be careful in these calculations. Okay? You have to find short circuit. Short Shortcuts, <laughs> not short circuit, shortcuts. Okay? That's what distinguishes an engineer from a non engineer. I won't say scientist. A non engineer. Okay. So I found out RE. And once I know these parameters, then other parameters calculate very easily. GM is I sub C, that is 50 microampere divided by 26 millivolt. And this calculates out as 1.92 minimo once I know GM then I know AD AD is minus GM the differential mode gain minus GM RC parallel what R naught small R naught I cannot ignore it RC is 100k <coughs> and what is small R naught VA was given as 100 volt, okay, 100 volt divided by 50 microampere, which is equal to 2 megs, 2 megs is 2000 K, 20 times this, but even then, because of high gain calculations, they include this, be, be kind to R0 and do not ignore it. <laughs> this, in my calculation, this comes out as minus 183 <coughs> okay then I require an RID RID which is equal to twice R pi now what is R pi <coughs> that is two times beta is 200 divided by 1.92 milli more you see how large R pi is, approximately 104K. Why does it happen? Because of the low values of collector current, okay? So no longer any of these can be ignored. Rx fortunately is an ohmic resistance. It still remains hundreds of ohms. It doesn't depend on current. But R pi cannot be ignored, R0 cannot be ignored. And this is 208K. 
this is a high input impedance amplifier. <coughs> Finally, I have to calculate the common mode gain, which as you know is minus GMRC divided by 1 plus twice GM times REE. This is also an approximate expression, but fairly accurate. Minus GMRC have already calculated minus 183. 1 plus 2 into 1.92 into 10 to the minus 3, 1.92 millimoles multiplied by 143 multiplied by 10 to the 3. Yes. Yes. That is correct. Thank you. That's why I used 183. Yeah. I missed that term. 1 plus 2 GMRE and how much is this? 143, approximately 0.3, it's a fraction. You see, this 10 to the 3, 10 to the 3 cancels, 3.8, take this as 4, 4 times 14, 516, so approximately one third, approximately 0.3. Minus 0.3. What is the same other than 183 divided by 0.3? That is more than 500. CMRR is more than 500. Okay. The third question. I will indicate the question and leave it to you to work it out. <coughs> third question is design a differential amplifier, <laughs> now no longer analysis. What I want is given, you have to give me the circuit. Design a differential amplifier that meets the following specs. I shall briefly discuss how to proceed. The specs are RID equal to 2 meg. Differential input resistance must be 2 meg. A sub D, the differential gain, I require minus 500. CMRR, I require 54 decibels. These are the ways people specify practical specifications. And VCEQ, that is the transistor's Q point, must be a very safe value, 5 volt is specified. Assume that the transistor beta is 200, that is you are given transistors, a lot of transistors, a lot, not many, I mean a lot, maybe a lot of 10 or a lot of 12, identical transistors, in which beta <coughs> is 200 and VA is 150 volt. This is what is given, you are required to design. Now what does design mean? Design means you will have to specify VCC. You will have to specify VEE, you will have to find out REE, you will have to find out R sub C, what else? That's all? That's all there is to it. Okay, how do you proceed? First, first, from this specification, you know what is R pi, all right? And if you know R pi, and you know beta, therefore you know GM. If you know GM, then you know I sub C, the collector current. Okay? Agree? <laughs> From RID, okay, let me draw the chart. From RID, find out R pi. Then combine the information on beta to find GM. Combine the information of R pi and beta to find GM. From GM, you find out I sub C. Okay? Alright? Now, VCEQ is given. Right? Therefore, from VCEQ and I sub C. No. No. <laughs> RC. Can RC be found out? Yes, 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 y
नो वी सी एक बी सी कंडीशन वी सी सी इज इक्वल टू आई सब सी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई आर सी प्लस वी सी क्यू माइनस पॉइंट सेवन एंड देर फॉर फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन फाइंड आउट आर सब सी ओके देन वंडरफुल सो यू कैन नॉट डू दैट we can find out no no this is has to be found out so i see from i see from r from the gain s sub d minus gm rc parallel r not r not is known because you know i sub c yes sir and v has been given and therefore and gm is known therefore from ad you can find out r sub c And if you know R sub C, then combine this with the given information on V C E Q and I sub C to find out V C C. Next, how do you find V E E? From the C. No, wait a second. From the C M R R. It is given in B B. We first have to convert it to a fraction, a number. Okay, first step to come. That is fifty-four <coughs> equal to twenty log ten of CMRR. From which you have to find out CMRR as a number, and that CMRR is equal to how much? Twice. This has to be here at the end of your nails. You just scratch it and the number. And so AD upon AC. No, we don't know what is AD. It is CMR. CMR is twice GM REE. -E. So if you know the CMR, you and you know GM, you know REE. -E. Okay. CMR was AD upon AC minus GM RC divided by. Okay, AC was minus GM RC divided by one plus twice GM REE. -E. One we ignore. And therefore, the ratio is twice GM RE. Since you know GM, since you know CMR, you can find out RE. -E. And if you know RE, -E, <laughs> finally you find out VE. -E -E. And the design is complete. Would you care to stop a minute and uh, note down what my calculations gave? <coughs> okay, my calculations say that V R sub C. Is equal to 2.7 meg. Then VCC <coughs> is equal to 17.3 volt. REE is equal to 1.25 meg. And VC VEE is 13.7 volt. Not very nice numbers, but this is unfortunately what they designed. Do you require anything else? Okay, that's all for today.